diabetes is a progressive disease, and the pancreas, the insulin-producing organ, isn't always able to keep up with the amount that people need. And so it's not uncommon for people with type 2 diabetes to need to take insulin. And I just want you to know that it's not because you did something wrong. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Young, and I'm an endocrinologist. I'm also a TikTok creator, Mad Endo. When someone needs to start insulin, when they have type 2 diabetes, will depend on many things. Sometimes the day of diagnosis, they need to be on insulin because they went undiagnosed for so long and their blood sugars are 600 on the day they're diagnosed. Pills won't work for 600. So that day, they're gonna to need to start insulin. They may not need to be on it forever, but the only way to get their blood sugars down quickly will be with insulin. Insulin is a hormone that's produced by the pancreas. It works by helping the body to move glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cells. In type 1 diabetes, you don't make enough insulin. And in type 2 diabetes, you don't use insulin efficiently. There's actually several things in the body that aren't going right when someone develops type 2 diabetes. The muscles don't use insulin efficiently. The liver puts out too much glucose. The kidneys don't get rid of glucose like they should. The brain tells you that you're hungry. And eventually, the pancreas, the organ that makes insulin, isn't able to make enough insulin to overcome those other problems. For people who have type 1 diabetes, that is, they don't make any insulin, or people who have type 2 diabetes, in which they may not make enough insulin to overcome their insulin resistance, we use insulin therapy in order to manage their blood sugars. The insulin that we use to treat diabetes is basically the same as the insulin that the body makes. It's a hormone that moves glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cells. Insulin is a protein. Because of that, it would be destroyed by the stomach acids, which is why, at the moment, we can't take insulin as a pill. It either needs to be injected or, in some cases, inhaled. Insulin can either be injected using a vial and syringe or using insulin pens. When using a vial and syringe, the vial contains several doses of insulin, and you would use an empty syringe to draw insulin out and then use that same syringe to inject it. People who are using, it, using an insulin pen, a pen is a device that's pre-filled with insulin. You would put a needle on the end and then dial to your dose and then use that to inject. The needles are very, very small. The needle that people use to check their blood sugar is actually bigger around, has a bigger diameter than the needles we use to inject insulin. Plus, when you're checking your blood sugar, you're doing it on your fingertips, which are very sensitive. When people inject insulin, they usually do it either on their abdomen or their thigh, or the back of their arm, where there's not as many nerve fibers. So it doesn't hurt as bad as a lot of people think. For people who have needle phobia, and that is a real thing, for people who are afraid of needles, giving themselves an injection can really be anxiety provoking. There are some pen needles where you can't see the needle, they are a little more expensive than the typical needle, but it's hidden by plastic, and it's not until you press the button on the pen that the needle comes out. The other possibility is to use other insulin delivery devices, devices that you can wear for a day. So yes, there's still a needle involved, but you don't need to see the needle. And then you get to deliver insulin multiple times during the day without having to give yourself additional injections. And insulin pumps, again, there is still a needle involved, but those don't need to be changed for three days. And with some newer supplies, you could keep them on for as long as seven days. So while there is still a needle involved, it is much less frequent than having to do multiple injections each day. So there are different types of insulin. There are what are called basal insulins, or long-acting insulins and there are rapid or short-acting insulins. Basal insulins last 24 hours or longer. We use these to prevent blood sugars from rising while we sleep and for those in-between times between meals. We use either the short or the rapid-acting insulins before meals to prevent blood sugars from spiking. And sometimes we'll use it when the blood sugars are high to try to bring the blood sugars down. Short-acting insulins start to work in 15 to 30 minutes. They peak in about an hour and a half and they last for about four to six hours. The rapid-acting insulins start working in about five, 10 minutes. Their peak is in about an hour and they're usually out of the system after about two hours. 
There are other insulins whose duration of action are between the basal and the short-acting insulins, but we don't use those very often anymore. In patients who have type 1 diabetes, who are not making any insulin at all, they will need both a long-acting insulin, a basal insulin, and rapid or short-acting insulin before each meal. People who have type 2 diabetes, who are on oral agents or other non-insulin medications, but need extra insulin, may be fine with either just a long-acting insulin in addition to their other meds, or they may need a short-acting insulin with certain meals. For example, someone knows that dinner is always the biggest meal of the day. Lunch and breakfast are small and their blood sugars don't rise much after that, but it always spikes after dinner. They may just need a short-acting insulin before dinner. When deciding among the different concentrations, it depends on how much insulin somebody needs in a day. If someone doesn't need much, then the U100 insulins are fine. If someone needs high doses of insulin, however, it's often easier for them to use the more concentrated insulins because the volume of insulin that they have to inject is smaller. So let's say, for example, you need 60 units. 60 units, if you were to dial that into a pan, would be you know, a significant amount of liquid. If you use U200, you would need half that amount. Some insulin safety tips. You want to make sure that you are rotating your insulin sites. You don't want to inject in the same spot every time because then you form scar tissue there and then you don't absorb the insulin as effectively. And you can use your abdomen, just don't do too close to the belly button. You can use your thigh, or you can use the back of the arm. It's kind of hard to do yourself in the back of the arm, so if there's someone who can help you do back there, that's probably best. But you can do all around your abdomen and your thighs. Don't inject in places that have scar tissue, bruising, or where there's an obvious infection. Don't use insulin that is expired. When using insulin syringes, you should use a new syringe every time. When using an insulin pen, you should use a new pen needle every time. I know that finding out that you need to take insulin can be scary, and it can take a lot of getting used to, but there are ways to incorporate it into your life and to make it simpler. Insulin can be a life-saving and life-preserving medication, and using insulin can help you lead a healthier life. I know there was a lot of information, and if you have additional questions, please speak to your doctor. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please continue to visit Healthline and like and subscribe.